Hello internet friends and welcome to the video. Grab a blanket, turn down the lights, because it's about to get uh, extra spooky in here. Now before we start, I just wanted to greet all of you newcomers, all 20,000 of you. Lord almighty, that's a lot of people. I have been overwhelmed by the response to the collab. There's been just a flood of awesome people joining this community, uh, and it really means so much to me that you guys saw Lil's uh, face and still decided to give it a chance. So. Thank you, I hope you'll stick around for more, and as always, thanks to the other 40,000 of you who've stuck with me through everything else. And here's to marching forward. So with Halloween coming up, I wanted to do something extra creepy, but I also wanted to avoid something that felt super typical. Then I thought, creepy caves, because you don't hear about those that often, and caves are kind of like the Earth's assholes, and who knows what's hiding inside of them. <laughs> Starting early. And in doing my research for that video, I ran across the legend of the Bell Witch. And it's such an eerie, alleged paranormal haunting that I've decided to dedicate an entire video to it. So before we continue, I said Bell Witch, not Blair Witch. Good movie, but not what we're talking about here. So let's go back to the year 1804. A farmer named John Bell packed up his bags and moved him and his family from North Carolina to a 320 acre farm nestled up against the Red River near Adams, Tennessee. Now Adams, Tennessee is allegedly a very peaceful place to live. It's a quiet town amongst grassy green hills with nothing but fields for miles and caves scattered here and there. John Bell actually had a very large cave on his own property, but we'll talk about that. So for the first 13 years, the Bell family lived peacefully on their farm, gaining moderate wealth and a few more children. John was active in the local Baptist church and became a deacon, but that didn't stop the spooksters from haunting him, apparently. So in the year 1817, that peaceful life the Bells were living, yeah, that went real quick. Uh, it started out when the Bells began to see odd-looking animals wandering the property at night. Some resembled dogs, while others were too unnatural to really describe. Then, late at night, when everyone was tucked into bed, they would hear the sounds of steady knocking coming from the doors, and eventually from the walls. And the family could never find the source for this sound, and eventually the knocking moved from outside to inside. But this is just the beginning. Soon, the Bells are awoken to the sound of wings flapping against the ceiling, like a bird trapped inside, only there were no birds, and they heard rats gnawing on their bedposts, but there were never any rats, and the sounds of chained, vicious dogs fighting one another, yet no dogs to be seen. This sounds like a demonic, less fun version of an invisible petting zoo, conveniently located inside your own home. But it wasn't just animal noises, of course not. Why would it be? There were people noises too, including the sounds of someone gasping for air, being strangled, voices, and of course, your various bangs, and the sounds of beds moving around on their own, and chains being dragged across the ground, you know. Just typical house sounds. In addition to all the creepy sounds, John Bell and his daughter Betsy are now being attacked by this malevolent force. Betsy often had her hair violently pulled, had sensations of being pinched, scratched, and eventually she felt as if she were being stuck with hot needles. And she was even slapped so hard that she had red handprints on her face and bruises just all over her body. John, on the other hand, uh, would be walking around and start to feel his face twitch, followed by the sensation of his throat slowly swelling shut. And then, being being stretched so wide, he said it felt as if someone had put a stick horizontally in the back of his throat. You know, like that picture from the American Horror Story Hotel promotional posters with the lady that came in her mouth? Now, imagine that in your windpipe. Yikes. And ouch. And also, that's what she said. I'm sorry. Then, then, this malevolent force, which has never visibly manifested itself at this point, starts talking to the family, sometimes whispering horrible things to them, other times just outright screaming curses and wishing death wishes upon the whole family. And this goes on for about a year. And the Bells just suffer in silence. They don't tell anyone. Because, I mean, think about it. What would you say if your neighbor just shows up at your door from several miles over and asks if he could chill at your place for a while because he thinks he's being stalked by an invisible insidious spirit? Sounds like a bit of a far-fetched excuse for a slumber party, you know? But John eventually can't take it anymore, and thinking that he and his entire family are going insane, he decides to not pack up his things and leave and get the hell out of there. Oh no. He decides, I'm not gonna go stay with my neighbor. I'm gonna invite them to stay the night here in this haunted hell house, because that's the neighborly thing to do, right? Let's have a slumber party in hell. It's great. 
His neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, last only a few nights, of course, before they do the smart thing, pack up their bags and hightail it back to the safety of their own unhaunted home. But Johnson did urge John Bell to tell more people to see if someone could get to the bottom of this strange and verging on dangerous activity. So John and Johnson start spreading the word, and soon people were traveling from miles around on their horse-drawn carriages to see if the rumors were true. People hear the strange knocking, they witness the abuse of the Bell family by this unseen force, and again, hear the entity talking on several occasions. And then who decides to come and check things out other than General Andrew Jackson? Yes, that Andrew Jackson who would later become the seventh president of the United States. I had to look that up because I couldn't remember what number he was. So he comes riding up with several of his men in his carriage when all of a sudden, the wheel becomes stuck on dry flat land. Jackson and all of his men can't get this wagon to move again. Then. All of a sudden, from some nearby bushes, they hear what is described as a metallic voice say, All right, General, let the wagon move on. I'll see you again tonight. Oh, oh, sorry. And that night, Jackson and his men had the covers torn off of them while they were trying to get some shut-eye. And by the time morning came, their tents had all been torn down. They left at sunrise without eating breakfast, and let's face it, probably without saying goodbye, because sayonara, bitch! Jackson was quoted saying something along the lines of, I'd rather face the entire British army than to spend another night with the Bell Witch. After the general visits, the family gets even more tourists wanting to hear this voice and to play truth or dare with it. I don't know, I'd be halfway across the freaking country if I'd been alive by then. But apparently, the Bell Witch knows its Bible trivia pretty well, and it was also able to tell people their past and predict their futures and could pull a horcrux and just be in two places at once. Now, at one point, someone thinks that it's a good idea to try and get to know the evil force a little better, so they start asking it questions. And of course, they start with the basics, asking it who it was. And it responds, saying that it is an unrest in spirit who's looking for her missing tooth beneath the house. Okay, really starting to feel like we should put the house up for sale, guys? Yeah? But, but, there's always a but with me. The entity was also known to adopt several different voices and personalities and claim to be many different people. But when it revealed one particular identity, something in John Bell's mind just goes, oh, right, I should have known. The entity said its name was Kate Batts, who was a former neighbor of John Bell's who had cursed John and his entire lineage on her deathbed. How he failed to mention that until this point Apparently, Kate's anger stemmed from the fact that Benjamin Batts, her brother-in-law, had a previous dispute with the purchase of a slave. Yes, we're going back to that horrific time in our history. Uh, long story short, two men are arguing over the price that John paid for a slave he purchased from Benjamin. Kate seems unsatisfied with the outcome of this transaction and decides to spend her golden years in the afterlife haunting him and his children. But specifically, she had two goals. One was to kill John Bell, and two was to make sure that Betsy Bell did not marry the boy she'd been dating, a neighbor named Joshua Gardner. Why? Fuck if I know. But whether you believe in the Bell Witch or not, she did what she came her to do. On December 20th, 1820, just a few years after the haunting all started, John Bell died under extremely strange circumstances. Allegedly, the family came into his room to wake him up, only to see a half-empty vial of some sort of medicine on his bedside table. No one had ever seen the medicine before, therefore no one in the family had given it to him, but they could see traces of it along his mouth. And that's when they realize that John is very, very dead. But just to be sure he'd truly been poisoned, they decide to feed the remaining medicine to the family cat, who subsequently begins having convulsions and dies. Unnecessary cat murder, not cool. Then just four months later, Betsy breaks off her engagement to the neighbor boy and the bell witch goes, I'm done here. I think I'll take a short vacation of seven years. Not a short vacation at all, but okay. She didn't actually say she was taking a vacation, but you get the point. She'd be back in seven years. She had other shit to do with her own life. And she stayed true to her word. The activity completely stopped until 1828, at which point she came back. And allegedly, instead of terrorizing the Bells, she had some pretty good conversations with John Bell Jr. about life, how things were going, the present, the future, you know? Just a friendly visit from the spirit that murdered your father. The Bell Witch did, however, reveal that there was a reason John Bell had to die, but that she couldn't say what it was and never would. Hey, so, uh, killed your dad. <laughs> but I had a really good reason, I promise. Oh yeah? And what was that? <laughs> I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I am? A witch? 
Then she packs her bags again for an extended holiday of 107 years <laughs> and she floats away. And I said, take me with you. <laughs> <laughs> the year of her return would have been 1935, however, the original cabin had to be torn down due to neglect, but fear not, because someone built a replica cabin in the exact same spot as the original, where it still stands to this day. Why would you do that? And according to all of the current reports of activity going on at the property, Kate Batts may have never left and possibly moved right into that big old cave on the property that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. The cave has pretty much been left untouched since the Bell family days, and you can even tour it, although it's possible you might run into old Kate. Many visitors report camera malfunctions or the image showing up completely black whenever they try to take a picture of the entrance of the cave, and others have even heard voices telling them to leave and never return. Except when they do leave and never return, bad luck seems to follow them everywhere. And considering the fact that apparently Kate knows how to make a horcrux, it wouldn't surprise me if she's just been split into thousands of souls at this point, making Voldemort seem like a noseless two-year-old with a pointy stick. Over the years, teenagers have obviously snuck into the caves for nefarious reasons or just for a good scare, like the team of football players who thought that it would be a good idea to hold a seance inside of the cave, only to find themselves unable to get off of the floor for several minutes no matter how hard they tried. <laughs> I'm just imagining this in my head and it's very funny. That's thunder you hear, by the way. Oh, it warms my soul. Then in the 1970s, a real big shot thought the cave was a perfect place to bring all of his lady friends for a good old fashioned cuddling. Yeah, right. Only one time he returned to his car to find the words, do not come back anymore on his windshield. And keep in mind, this property is 320 acres and no one currently lives there. So he heeded the warning and had to rely on the backseat of his car for his lady friends. Equally as classy, I guess. In addition to Kate Batts being... Batty. It's the joke you've all been waiting for this entire video. It's the joke you didn't deserve or need or want, and I'm sorry. I'm not even gonna finish that thought. How's that sound for you? Over the years, the claims of activities from those who visit the cabin and the cave has significantly diminished, but again, people still report all sorts of weird things going on and I don't wanna be a part of it. If you'd like to, uh, the Bell Witch Cave can be toured during the day, or as well, they have candlelight tours for those of you out there who are braver than I, which is like all of you. There are also several books about the Bell Witch that have been written and you can Google those if you're looking to do some more reading on the subject. All right, guys, that's all I have for you for today's video. I will see you next Friday for another super special video with another member of the horror YouTube community. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be super dark and it's a topic that's been requested by several of you. So stay tuned and be sure to check that out again next Friday. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot. And if you want to stick around and see more content from me, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below because there's always more creepy on the way. For instance, if you'd like to check out my last spoopy video, you can click on the link there in the bottom. Over there. Forgot where it was for a second. It'll take you to three seriously creepy castles, or if you want something more akin to what you saw last week, you can find my Dark Matter series by clicking on the top link over there. Okay, guys. Stay batty. <laughs> I hate myself. Have a good night, guys. I feel it in my bones. Hello, internet friends. Oh, well, I spit everywhere. <laughs> Oh, girls. The Red River, Red River, Red River, Red River, Red River, Red River. They hear what is described as a metallic, metallic, metallic. <laughs> Something literally just happened inside my body, and I don't know what it was. Okay. All right, General. Let the wagon. <laughs> His men had the covers torn off of him. <laughs> what is wrong with me today? <laughs> killing it today. I'm killing it. What if we all clapped like this? Can you just imagine an entire stadium of people? <laughs> Done being weird. Battery's running out. Time to do things with my mouth. That sounded bad. Okay. Maybe it didn't sound bad. Maybe you're just a pervert, Kaylee. Why don't you accept that about yourself? Okay. Yes, I did just drop a hair on the ground. Fuck off, okay? When you have as much hair as I do, it's just gonna happen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Y'all are like, what the fuck is she doing? For instance, if you'd like to check out my last spoopiest video, spoopy, spoopy, I sound like Professor Snape. <laughs> Perfect, just started pouring rain. I gotta do narration recordings after this. Gotta keep my voice all nice and lubed up, you know? Nice and lubed up like Adele. <laughs> Adele's not nice and lubed up, her voice is. I don't...
I lose this day. I just do.